Knowing how to use the verb gustar correctly is one of the biggest problems that my beginning Spanish students have. The verb gustar works quite differently in Spanish as the verb like does in English, and it's almost a backwards construction compared to what you see if you speak English as your primary language. The verb gustar doesn't mean to like, but it literally means to be pleasing. So when you say something is pleasing in Spanish, you say it is pleasing to me, it is pleasing to you, and so on and so forth. So in order to form those gustar phrases correctly, we need to use the indirect object pronoun, which translates into English as to me, to you, to him, to her, to us, to you guys, to them, right? Those words in Spanish are me, te, le, nos, os, and les. Keep in mind that os is only used in Spain because it's the corresponding form that goes with vosotros, and vosotros is a form that's only used in Spain. In Latin America, if I have to address multiple you, you plural, then I use les. Because remember that both in Spain and Latin America, if I'm addressing you formally, I use the third person. Usted and ustedes are third person pronouns, and when I use the indirect object form of them, it's also going to be third person. So if you want to say a sentence like, I like water, in Spanish you would say, water is pleasing to me. So you would say, me gusta el agua. It means water is pleasing to me. To me, it's pleasing water, okay? The word order is a little bit different from what we might expect, taking English. But remember that in Spanish, when I have a conjugated verb, the object pronoun goes before a conjugated verb. If the thing that's being liked is plural, then the verb gustar has to be conjugated in the third person plural. For example, if you say, I like books, you would say, me gustan los libros. The gusta becomes gustan because now you're saying books are pleasing to me. Given that le doesn't actually translate literally into English as meaning to him, to her, or to you formal, it actually means to any third person singular entity. So for that reason, if you're talking a lot about him and her and you formal, it can get a little bit confusing or ambiguous if I just start using le without any kind of um, introduction. So we're also allowed to use a prepositional a phrase in order to make that le more clear. For example, if I want to say he likes books, and I really want to make sure you know that I'm talking about him because we've been talking about multiple different people or it's kind of ambiguous or I'm introducing a new concept, I would say a él. Le gustan los libros. I still need the le, even though a el translates back literally into English as meaning to him. I cannot drop the le now just because I have a el. So I say a el le gustan los libros. If I want to say she likes books, I would say a ella le gustan los libros. If I want to say you formal like books, I say a usted le gustan los libros. The corresponding forms in the third person plural are a ellos. A ellas and a ustedes. Les gustan los libros. The le has to change to les because now it's pleasing to a plural group of people in the third person, right? There are corresponding prepositional phrases that go with the first person and the second person. They're never needed for clarity because me always means me, te always means you, nos always means us, and os always means you guys. There's not really any question about who me, te, nos, os refer to. But I can put them in if I want to be emphatic or if I want to make some kind of um, comparison between two different people. So if I want to say I like books and maybe somebody else doesn't, I would say a mí me gustan los libros. The corresponding a mí, it means to me. And again, I cannot drop the me even though I have a mí at the beginning of a sentence. For you, singular, informal, I would say a ti. A ti te gustan los libros. We is a nosotros or a nosotras if we're all women. And then to you guys, if I'm in Spain, is a vosotros or a vosotras if the vosotras are all women. There are plenty of verbs that work the same way that have this backwards construction in the Spanish language. The verb encantar, which means to find something enchanting, to really like something. The verb sobrar, which means to have a lot of something. The verb uh, quedar, which means to have things remaining. Okay? The verb acabar, which means to run out of something or to, to finish up using something. There are so many verbs in Spanish that use this backwards construction. And I think the verb gustar is a good verb to start using to get these concepts in place because it's a very common verb and it's the one that you're probably going to be using the most often. 
when you first start learning Spanish. So I hope this video was able to clear up some of the problems that you might be having with the verb gustar, and subscribe to my channel Mapamundi to see new videos about world languages coming out every Friday.